Hello, and welcome to the odd and intriguing world of Pokemon. I'm Professor Noki, and you are here for Poke Education on Noki Jr. What are Pokemon? Since many of us were small children, or to those of you who still are, Pokemon have been these fantastic and relatable creatures that have taught us countless lessons and taken us through some awe-inspiring adventures. Whether you have been playing since its very inception like I have, or you have jumped on board somewhere along the journey, this is probably true for you. What would you tell somebody, however, who has never heard of Pokemon before when they ask you what these things actually are? My assumption is that many people would be like myself initially and hodgepodge a collection of general descriptions together based on our agreed overview of what Pokemon look like and act like, the types they are, and the moves they can use. But would that really necessarily be all too accurate to paint for that person a vivid picture of what a Pokemon really is? Today, I'd like to explore this concept a little deeper and see if we can't flush out what it really means to be classified as a Pokemon along with how that relates to our understandings, relationships, and perceptions of the living world around us. At first glance, it can be very easy to mistakenly lump all Pokemon as animal-like creatures with elemental superpowers. Although this can somewhat be said for a number of them, many appearing mammalian in nature, this does not accurately describe every single Pokemon. There are many, take Sunflora or Bounceweep for example, that are entirely based around various plant species, these act and live very much like the plants we know, using the sun for photosynthesis and growing with access to clean water and nutrient-rich soil. There are other Pokemon still that are based around non-physical entities such as ghosts and multi-dimensional creatures, with such examples being like Duskull and Marshadow. Some of these Pokemon are even supposedly the spectral remains of humans or other Pokemon. Keeping with this wide range of representation and variety among the various species of Pokemon from type to type in mind, the first real categorical conclusion that we can draw is that the term Pokemon itself is as loosely used as our term for creature. Anything from the microscopic world to plants, fungi, insects, and animals are referred to as creatures in our world and this is very much akin to the role the category of Pokemon takes in its own respective world. Therefore, at their very conceptual core, Pokemon are just a group of animate living things inhabiting a world. This is somewhat vague and anticlimactic, however, considering that these so-called creatures are capable of harnessing some amazing and extraordinary abilities and powers. Where do these powers come from, and what do they represent from our own experiences in the real world? Some of these, such as fire, grass, ice, rock, ground, electric, and water, are derived from the naturally observed elements all around us. Others, like dragon, fairy, ghost, and psychic, derive their origins from myths and fairy tales, while poison, bug, flying, and steel represent direct aspects of our world, and types like dark, normal, and fighting seem to allude to human-like attributes. In our world, Many of these phenomenon can be explained and understood through various forms of scientific research and analysis. However, we've seen throughout the Pokemon world that these mystical abilities and the Pokemon who use them are what is explained to be the driving force behind the changes that occur to the environment and people inhabiting it. This is much like how the gods and goddesses of the Greek pantheon represented the physical incarnations of natural forces that were not quite understood by humans at that time in our history. In the world of Pokemon, these powers, as well as the ability for a Pokemon to evolve and be captured into Pokeballs, are derived from the naturally flowing infinity energy. We've seen this concept play a vital role throughout many entries in the series, with all Pokemon able to connect with this mysterious force. This is very similar to many forces that play a role in our own universe, such as gravity and dark matter, in that they can be recorded and their impact observed, However, their origin remains widely unknown and misunderstood. In this way, we can ascertain yet another categorical conclusion that Pokemon themselves are purely made up of this energy. And keeping with the theme of comparison, seem to represent the spiritual energy that many religions, practices, and faiths center around today. Lastly, we cannot discuss what a Pokemon is without also alluding to the bond it creates with its trainer. As seen throughout the history of Pokemon, 
Catching one is not simply picking a random creature and throwing a ball at it, but rather there is a lot more depth behind the idea of whether the Pokemon also chooses you. Pokemon generally seem to make this decision based upon whether you as a trainer display the qualities and conduct that they can resonate with, appearing to be just as important of a choice to the Pokemon as it is to the trainer. This Pokemon becomes more than just a tool, or even sparring partner to you, but also takes on the role of a moral and spiritual guide, presenting situations to grow and learn from in many areas of life. This is not unusual to our own world in that many cultures deeply believe in the idea of spirit animals or guides that one can look to for clarity and understanding. With that, we can flush out our final categorical conclusion, which is that Pokemon are to represent spiritual guidance. The three themes and categorical conclusions that I've come to seem to roughly center around the idea of mind, body, and spirit. Pokemon seems to weave these three concepts within the stories of all of their games, and how important it really is for one to maintain balance between all three. Therefore, the next time a fresh face to the world of Pokemon asks you, what are these things? You can explain to them in confidence that they are simply a digital representation of the harmonious and mystical forces of nature and spirit that exist all around us, operating below the surface of our own awareness and keeping balance to all things. Spirit guides to help direct us down the path of kindness, courage, and discovery. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, this is Professor Noki signing off for Noki Jr.